Hi, everybody. What's up, everybody? What's up? Happy Friday. Back. Happy Friday from us here at Office Hours. Nick Andrew and Andrew Hawk Rattle. Nick, Nick. Oh. Wow. Okay. It is the end of the week. <laughs> take two. Take two, everybody. Guys, we're going to take five and a We're going to be back in five. Mm -hmm. Oh, welcome. How is everyone's week? Yeah. Let us know in chat. Always great to see you here. Nick, how was your week? This was one of those weeks. It felt like the new, first week of the new year for me. Yes. It was like all the little things I wanted to kind of get in order and get ready. I did the first week and now it paid off the second week because like I'm organized. Work's getting back into the swing of things. People took some weeks off. It felt like a lot of clients school were still out. So it's kind of kind of nice uh so pretty good how about you man um it was the equivalent of like people say drinking from a fire hose but it's more like i had a fire hose just like duct taped to my face uh that's kind of how this week was uh for those of you that don't know i started a role at adobe um yes. i'm officially on board which is exciting uh but boy onboarding remotely uh during a panini is whew, very 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 intense uh, but we are here we are excited for office hours Nick, we're in the middle of something very special here on Office Hours. What are we doing over the next year? Yeah, so we're right in the middle of it. <laughs> we're at week two of the Creative Basics. And uh, this is our attempt to kind of go back a little bit and go to the fundamentals, go to the things that are the foundation of your design and of your skill. So we're hoping this really helps everybody out. The, the novice, the pro, uh, the person that hasn't even like started using the applications or becoming a, a creative. We're giving you, I think, every chance to kind of, you know, get your game going. Yep. For sure. Yep. And we're using that the hot tagline of novice to no fear and less than one year. It's got to rhyme. It's got to rhyme. So we are taking yep. you there. And Nick, these two uh, episodes of the show are a little bit of a one off before we get into where we're going next. Um, Nick, what did we do last week? Last week was all about the idea. Um, that was kind of our, our way of introducing you to some new project, some new kind of thing that you're working on, and coming up with the overall ideas. We did a really great live brainstorm. If you didn't catch last week's, make sure you do that as well, because I don't think that's ever been really done too much on the uh, on the airwaves just yes, yet, Yes, we right? got to brainstorm together, which was super mm -hmm. fun. Um, we brought on our moderator, Wade. Hi, Wade. Um, and we uh, brainstormed a concept and talked about ideation. Today, we're talking about layout and sketching. So we wanted to lay the foundation for these two ideas before we got into Illustrator, Photoshop, or InDesign. We wanted to have foundational things to get into design. That's what we're doing here, Creative Basics. This was the basic basics. Um, all right, so last week, we ended on a an idea we're going to talk about that at the end of this episode, but there is something that we do on this show, if you're just joining us for the first time, that is very, very special and unique to this show, and that is our Discord. So, Nick, yeah. what is our Discord for? Our Discord is kind of like our bulletin board. It's everything, right? It's like if we were in a class together, this is everything that we do, including homework that sometimes we ask you guys to kind of follow up on. And and a few of you did it from last week, it looks like, right? Yep. And it looks like uh, over here. So discord.gg slash ACC. Um, that is the place to go for this. So what you're going to do is you're going to come in here. And then you're going to go over to the side, scroll down to where it has office hours. And you can see there is a creative basics channel in here to where people are posting some ideas for our uh, our concept that we worked on together. There's a homework channel where we have a couple, uh, a couple mood boards. And then there's a classroom chat. And so specifically today, the classroom chat's gonna be really important. If you wanna join us, go ahead and hop into the classroom chat and it's a voice chat. So you can hang out, voice uh, talk in there and we will be bringing you on at the end of the show if you'd like to, to brainstorm with us. We're gonna be doing sketching live here with you. So you can post your sketches and homework or you could join us on the show for some live conversation. So go ahead, hop into that classroom chat. Again, discord.gg slash ACC. All right, That'll Nick. Wow, I talk too much. Um, we we're ready to go in. It's it's two thirty five, yeah. which is our five minute cutoff for announcements. Let's hop in. What are we talking about today? Yeah, sketching and layout. Let's get into it. Um, question for you. Yes. How, how every project you do, what yes. percentage do you start it off with with sketching or include sketching? I should even say, just at yes. any any stage. So because we're all guilty of that. Probably right? probably a hundred. I am a very visual person, like mentally. 
And so I like to do my sketching like in my head and I, I'm not good at drawing. And so I have trouble transforming what is in my head, right? From last week's lesson of ideation onto paper. Drawing is not the way that I like to do that. Um, Got it. I like to do that by throwing things into Illustrator. I understand Illustrator better and how to translate to an Illustrator document better than if I was just drawing. Um, if I have a sure. basic idea, I will do a super terrible sketch to just tell myself, hey, here's what's in your brain. Go put this in Illustrator now. So yeah. it's not necessarily like sketching and high fidelity. It's literally just like, here are the shapes, here are the ideas. Okay, get into your process now. What about you? Yeah. I know that you're like a hardcore sketcher. Ooh, I'm trying to. It's still a, it's a work in progress, you know? And I want to ask the, the chat as well, what percentage of projects do you actually take the time and include sketching? Yes. Uh, I think most people, you know, if you're honest, I know a lot of times I will jump right into Illustrator and and just do it. But um, what I've learned is if you create process throughout your projects and with each of your clients or however you work, that sketch process is almost automatic now. It has to be in there. And the one thing I can say is I think I'm much more successful when I do spend a lot of time with that sketching. Yes. So tell us, guys, what percentage of projects that you're working on definitely include sketching. Yes. Do we have some sketchy sketchers in chat? Uh, let us yeah. Know. Everyone's a little sketchy yeah, let's today, see, right? Let's see if chat's a little bit <laughs> sketchy today. Um, yeah. So if you know me, if you have watched Office Hours before, you know that I love history. If you haven't, hi, welcome. Uh, Chris, hello. Uh, new face saying hi in chat. Hello. Nice What's to up, see you. What's up, Chris? I love history, and we're going to talk about history in every lesson. We're talking about the history of layout. So we're going to talk about layout first, and then we're going to talk about sketching. And layout is basically just making sure that everything that you're putting on is balanced, right? It's all the pieces that you need to include. If you're a small business owner, this is things like the address, images, your promotional copy, links. Um, all of that stuff are different pieces that need to go into your layout. And a layout actually comes right from back in the day when we used to print or have wood blocks and we would be printing with hot metal we'd be printing with wood and we would have to align things and we would lay them out in blocks just like you can see here this image is a big block and then over here we have blocks of copy and it turns into these kind of columns so this is something that has just carried over into the digital world yeah. is we still use things like placeholders. We still use grids. We still use these concepts, but we've just digitized them, right? Yeah. And Nick, you kind of do this, but you do this with sketches, right? Um, and I think yeah. we have some examples here. Can you talk about kind of how you approach your sketches and the idea of layout? Yeah, I learned through some folks that really gave me the baseline of where to start because like most of us, and I've seen a few people kind of mention that too, I might not be the best at drawing, like, and I know you feel the same way as well a lot of times, but your sketches are really just for you at the beginning to get the brain dump out. So don't ever worry about the quality and in a lot of ways, don't worry about the qu quantity as well. What I want to do is do the most baseline sketch as possible. Yep. This one on the left here is just the quickest thing. I was working with a student and they couldn't figure out the hierarchy of an ad that they were trying to produce for a job application. This was like, they were, had to do one of those like test, you know, projects. And sometimes this is as simple as it should be. Where is my headline? Where is my main image? Where will the logo go? Where's a call to action? Very simple. Yep. So to me, it's not about the quality of your design. It is truly about what you're putting out there on the page itself. These other ones to the right really just show very simple ideas of body copy, headline, image, photography, whatever it might be. Then it gets a little bit more uh, creative with the ones on the right there too. Some of those ones that get angled. So again, like to me, when I do this, even I'm designing a can or a quick label for a client, why not just spend the five seconds in just putting together the blueprint? Yep. And I think what happens is you get a much more finite idea to finally explore. And we'll talk about it a little bit in some of the slides later, but I think there's this disadvantage when you go to digital first, because it's not the free flowing creative mind, you know, kind of just laying it out. It is restricted. So 
I'm a big fan of it. I just know from history when I do do it and I use it correctly, I get a much better end result. Yep, and I've actually learned a great tip from DKNG, uh, which if you guys haven't checked them out, DKNG is an amazing, amazing uh, design studio, but they always talked about sketching small because you have to have less detail. Yes. They're like, sketch small, and then like your clients Good. will imagine the detail, and then you can suck at your sketch, and they'll think it's amazing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> which I think and is he, so smart. Maybe the first level of your sketching could be just that. And yep. and we'll do that when we're going live. The small idea means you just can't go into the details, right? Yep. yep. Yeah, love that. Uh, so talking about the different kinds of layout, uh, this is a great resource. If you want to get on Amazon or whatever, uh, your local bookstore, check out Making and Breaking the Grid. It is an incredible resource to give you grids to make sure that when you're laying something out for newspaper, you're laying out something. Uh, if you're using Adobe uh, Express, uh, Creative Cloud Express, super easy to grab grids, put it in there so everything feels right, but you don't have to always use grids. Uh, David Carson is an amazing designer, incredible, amazing, one of my favorites, um, and he didn't really care about grids. It was full chaos. It was all about the emotion that you could find. You can see that like nothing is balanced here. Things are offset on the right. And so when we talk about layout, there's no rules. There's no rules to layout. There are suggestions, but again, design is all yeah. about experimenting and trying new things. And look at that, Not, no gutters between the, the columns. Uh, it goes from dark, you know, like bold to thin to the justifications, like all yep. over the place. Like, Type over the spine. I, I'm such a fan of that r rebellious kind of thing. I, I don't think, I think there'd be, it'd be fun to just do that on the side. If you don't get to do this in your real job, and let's face it, some of us, I, I don't know if I, how much I can incorporate into real stuff, but you might as well be doing it on the side just for fun. Yep. That's amazing. Absolutely. I love that. That layout's great. And Mimi is saying, I need tiny hands to do tiny sketches. Yes. Yes. There you go. Absolutely. It's been a while since we've brought up the tiny hands. We may need to ha have a comeback of tiny hands. There you go. So talking about balanced layout, um, every element that you are working with has a weight and if you think about it as like a record that is on a pin, right? The pin's in the middle and everywhere that you put one of those elements, it's going to topple and tip it just a little bit. Um, and so this example from Nick is actually perfect, right? So let's say you own a small business, you own a burger joint, right? You want a big image of the burger. You want a headline that says, you know, come eat here. You've got your logo. You've got uh, your address. You can see here that we've actually used a layout and a sketch to make sure that everything's balanced, right? If I was yeah. to put the middle of this and suspend it, it wouldn't tip to any side. It would look like it's perfectly balanced. Now, if we didn't have the it. headline on top, it would look like it's falling backward, right? Um, yeah. And so we want to make sure that everything is balanced and it feels like it's not going to be leaning or tipping. Great way to think about it. Because it's like a 360 approach. Now you're covering the overall weight distribution kind of balance of that thing. And not, that's not to mention, you know, negative space and, and keeping things, you know, light is, is out of the question. I think that becomes a part of it, but that idea of it spinning just makes you think a little bit more overarching to everything, right? Yep, absolutely. Yeah, and so that. another thing that you need to pay attention to when you're balancing your layout, uh, and this will help you a lot if you're trying to do stuff on your own, always maintain rivers and streams, never leave lakes. Okay, so th think about that visually is you always want rivers and streams. So you can see here that it, it, it's the same thing with balance. If we dropped water onto the middle of your uh, design, your layout, you need to make sure that the water's not gonna get stuck anywhere. So you can see here that it would flow out the sides by this burger, it would flow down over here into these open spaces, but you never wanna have an area where it feels like water will get trapped or just sit, right? That it feels like there is a pool. So this is a great example up here. And this top right, you can see there's that triangle that has elements yeah. all around it. That becomes yeah. a lake, right? If we poured water on it, it would sit there and like maybe slowly trickle out the top, but it may get stuck. Um, and so we need to do that. Uh, okay, uh, let's continue on. Nick, you're going to talk. I'm going to work on some audio stuff, which think, no I think maybe some audio is happening. So uh, go ahead and do that. All right, oh, Nick. Perfect. Talk about sketching. All right. So on this point here, what we want to talk about is why you should do this. We talked a little bit at previous about the importance of it. Um, my own personal kind of like advantage, I feel like when I do it, but what it's doing is it's obviously helping convey that message or the idea. And most importantly, it's kind of demonstrating the functionality of what that's going to be. If you think about what Andrew just said about 
how that layout's working. Is it going to be successful? Is the functionality there? Well, here's your chance to look at it, visualize it. How's that user flow going? And illustrate anything that requires some human interaction. And thinking about how the eye travels, right? When you look at certain documents, does it start at the top left? Does it make its way through some columns? I always, I'm just a big fan of just letting the, the viewer or the consumer pick the way it should be read based on their preference, on their way of looking at it. It should be easy for them to understand it. I think when you can confuse it, there's a place for it, but maybe not in a lot of the work that some of us do, but an editorial, something great like we saw that Carson did, would be a phenomenal chance to try yeah. something totally different, right? Absolutely, and uh, Mimi had not to be con uh, confused about rivers. When we talked about rivers, is within a text block? Yes, so that's mm -hmm. actually a good point. Let me show you what rivers are in a text block real quick. So let's say that we had a block of text, right? And we had it set to this. These are all rivers, right? Yes. This is a river flowing through your copy and you don't want that. You Ooh. want to make sure that, right, that water is going to just sit on the side and kind of careen down. It's not going to hit any mm -hmm. rivers in the middle. So uh, thank you, Mimi. That's great input. Uh, and thank you. Yes, Wade is pointing out if you are in the classroom chat over in Discord, um, look at all the people in classroom chat. Hey, good what's job, up, guys. Um, go ahead and just mute your mics if you're in there. Um, if you're talking, you can unmute, um, but make sure that the double audio isn't going over because it gets really crazy if there's uh, our audio coming through in two different places. So Come on. a and bunch you of people want to hear us. You right? want to hear us? Yeah. <laughs> uh, also, Come a on. bunch of people just joined. I don't know where you came from. Maybe Twitter. Hello, if you've come from Twitter, uh, give us a hands up. Uh, Nick, what's floating down here for all of our new friends? Guys, check out the Discord channel. It's right here below. That link will take you right to it. And you see everybody who's in the chat right now and kind of talking. But um, but you can check on it all week long. There's yep, like absolutely. Great stuff and going on. If you have any troubles with Discord, 100%, post something in chat. One of our mods will help you figure it out. Uh, it takes a little bit to get into, but once you're in there, welcome to our community. You can be a part of it and hang out with us and contribute. Look at these people. Hey, Chris, thanks for joining uh, in there as well. And if you are just joining today, we are talking about sketching and layout. Uh, we're okay. just finishing up our layout section and we will be going into sketching um, and we will be doing some sketching together, which is going to be super fun. So get your pad and fun. paper ready um, and then hop into Discord. All right, Nick, continuing, what is good sketching? If we do yeah, sketching so, right, what does it look like? Yeah, so if you're using a pencil, piece of paper, whatever you're doing, you are able to shape out a realm without limits. Now, like I said earlier, what I love about this is if you are truly in a mindset of exploring and discovering and finding out a solution to this problem, I feel like you are in that frame of mind best if you're doing it on pen and on paper yes. sometimes i feel like the two-dimensionality of your um of working directly into an app first can limit you so try this idea and i mean the best thing we're going to show you some resources some great stuff but to be honest with you sometimes my favorite thing is just buying the cheapest notebooks in the world the spiral bound ones you can find anywhere to me that I have no fear of filling that up or making a mistake. Yep. If I get a really nice one, which we all have, we know for sure, but like I have a nice one that I haven't even cracked into because I, I'm afraid to, I don't want to mess it up, yep. right? Absolutely. Um, so get, start there first. It doesn't have to be expensive. It doesn't have to be this great book. It's just paper and some kind of writing instrument and get yourself flowing. Yep. That's the and best way. So my desk, the top of my desk is actually a whiteboard. Um, I ordered it so that the top of my desk is a whiteboard so I can write on it. And so I have mm. a bunch of whiteboard markers that are always in my desk so I can jot down ideas. And then I use Adobe Capture to literally sketch out go. an idea right next to my keyboard if I have an idea real quick. Great and then idea. I grab Adobe Capture, hit it, throw it into a library, and then it just exists and I have it in that Creative Cloud library so I don't have to track it anywhere, I don't have to waste paper. Um, yeah. It's really, really great. And yes, Wade says, no fear. Don't be precious with sketches. Just go yeah. for it. Absolutely. So I think if you have the nice book, you're going to be really precious. Or if you're on computer first, you're not thinking as free foam and as like kind of three-dimensional in a way, if that makes sense. Yep. yep. So you keep those. Get the cheap ones. I think that's the best way to go. Yep. Keep or the good ones for like something better. Literally but, go to know. any event or any conference and mm -hmm. it's just like an endless amount of swag. Uh, swag and sketchbooks. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Um, 
love all right continuing on talking about that creative sandbox kind of being able to just play around when you sketch uh it's a creative sandbox generate ideas deep concepts from your heart and from your soul just let it flow out onto the paper you don't have to put pressure on yourself literally just let it flow through to your hand um have you ever done the exercises nick where you just start writing letters and then see like what words come out yeah that's a kind of interesting way to go for sure yeah Yeah. i sometimes what i do is i'm I, I have I keep my inspiration. We're gonna talk a little bit about research too, but I keep my inspiration around me too, just so there's a I'm at least starting in the right way. Because when I go the letter route, um, I tend to do the same thing over and over again. I'm yes. not I'm not stretching my creative boundaries in that way. Yep. And so let's talk about where where we start. Right. A lot of yeah. people are daunted a little bit with like, how do I start any of this? I am not a creative. I'm not a designer. How do I jump in? How do I get started? Where do we start with sketching? Because again, it's easy for anyone to be a part of this, but how do we do that? Yeah. Oh, good point. Because you're right. We're, I want to talk to those folks that maybe this might not be in your wheelhouse, but I've been pleasantly surprised. I'm sure you could say the same thing when you get a sketch from a client who is not artistic in any way. And yet it totally makes sense. There's something about that stick figure that goes, yep, yep. I got it. Yep. We're good. You're right. So what I tell them is to keep that up and keep practicing and keep doing that over and over again. Something about that communication, that's the best way you can give me a visual and it's the best way I could start a sketch as well. And keep in mind, the better you do it, and we've seen this in our students probably, I'm sure we both can attest to that. I'm sure all of you have seen yourself get better and better. I know my sketching has gotten better only because I do it over and over again. You repeat that practice. And soon enough, you'll get to a point where you'll master it. Yep. And, and it's, again, it's not the quality. Mastering it is a totally different thing to you, me, and everybody else. Yep. And sometimes right? it's where to start is you just go and then you yeah. keep going until you have it. So I'm going to show you, we're going to look at this a little bit later, but I'm going to show you some pages from my sketchbook. So this was a logo mark that I was working on. And literally all that I did was keep sketching the idea again and again and again until I had something that I thought was interesting. Um, yeah. And like it started out sucky and I was like, there's an idea here. It's not this. And then it kept going and it's like, okay, so it's still not this until it got to a point where I was like, oh, I like this. And then it ended up not being that. Uh, and so yeah. that's the thing. You just have to go like the, where to start is just like, as long as there's momentum going, that's the perfect place to start. Oh, I love what Chris just wrote. I first heard the term precious from my graphic design instructor. I thought she had made it up, but obviously not. It's so true. Yep. And I think that's one of the biggest barriers to break when it comes to not only being a creative, uh, but just being a professional in our world. At a certain point, you can't be too precious with a lot of this stuff. You do have to be – what I always, what my favorite line is that a, a boss told me it was be passionate, not precious. Yes. And I think that's a big difference. Yep, yeah, absolutely. And here are the benefits of sketching. This is why we should all sketch. And I'm saying this to myself of like, Andrew, this is why you should sketch. Uh, yeah. What are the benefits to sketching? Oh, okay. This is the biggest one because, and I just went through this with a ton of stuff that we figured out. It it allows you to find that potential problem or issue much earlier in the process. If you have spent hours putting together vectors and artboards and layers, particularly like uh, the printing layers that we're working on, if I didn't figure out this problem in the sketch phase, I would have probably wasted 20 hours worth of work when it came to what I put together in Illustrator. So the cool thing about it is you're in the experimental phase. So you'll find an issue much faster. That's number one. Number two, it's better for discussions with collaborators. So not only people that are on your team, but let's say it's your, you know, I, I, I don't often show sketches to, to clients, but if I have to, this helps me make that uh, communication and that discussion much easier because they're getting a quick wireframe or something yep. kind of, or and a stick figure, you know? I love showing sketches to clients, but the way that I sketch is a little different. So we'll get into that and we'll see some of my actual paper sketches, but then I'll show you the way that I sketch, which yeah. is just idea dumps in Illustrator. And I actually yeah. love to show those to clients. So those are great. That's yes. a good one too. Uh, let's talk about research really quickly. We don't have a ton of time left, so let's kind of blaze through these last few slides and then get into it because we want you all to sketch along with us today. Nick, research. Yeah. What's research? Yeah, so research is where the initial idea obviously beca- beca- becomes like the initial idea and it begins. We, we kind of dabbled on this last week a little bit. That's kind of ideation and everything. Yep. Um, it's where you're, everything that you're envisioning that could be possibly be there comes together. I like to put it in a bundle or you can use it in um, uh, Pinterest, whatever it becomes, your mood board. But sketching helps you extract all of those numerous ideas, everything yep. that all those components together and it starts to look and feel. And I yep. think that's the whole point about this, right? You okay. want that beginning. 
Yes. Maybe I've been watching too many cooking shows, but here's how I imagine this. And this is just a metaphor for y'all. Y'all know I love to yeah. have like absolutely insane metaphors that help you understand. Uh, it's like making cheese. <laughs> Make, okay, have you ever seen, right, the way that they make, I think, mozzarella is it's in, like, this, like, liquid, right? And then they yes. put it in a cheesecloth and they have to squeeze it. And that's all that it is, right? Ideation and research is getting all that stuff in together. And then you put that cheesecloth in and then that becomes the sketch. Is you you wring out all that stuff that doesn't matter, that's just extra, that are just ideas and concepts. And then when you open it, you have, like, okay, cool, this is kind of the thing. So... First idea is there. Make some mozzarella. Right. I, I knew that talking food may resonate with you, Nick. Uh, exactly. Nick. Especially you, you made it even more relatable as a, with mozzarella. Mo <laughs> mozzarella. Nick loves his cheese. Uh, yeah. All right. So let's look at some examples. Um, and you know that Nick and I love to show you examples behind the scenes because uh, we're just as struggling as as y'all are. Uh, there are yeah. times that, right, it's like, oh, they're teaching us something. And, like, they probably have – no, we have no idea what we're doing. Mm -hmm. uh, we have some concept, but, like, we want to show you our failures and the rough sketches so that you don't have this idea that your sketches have to be amazing. You can see that, like, no, everybody's sketches suck. Uh, so as long as first you uh, you understand it, great. Yes. If, if you needed to make a client understand it, yeah, maybe it needs to be a little bit more fine-tuned. But, yes. yeah, we got a few good ones to show you. So, Nick, let's so, talk about cannons. Love this. So like that one on the left there was drawn literally on the napkin in a meeting with the client as we were eating and literally became the, the end result as you can see it evolved and got to like where it's, where it's at now. And what's really great about that one is, again, it was capture. I, I used it right from there, had it in there because my fear, you know what my problem was going to be? I'd lose that napkin. Like it would have made it back in one piece or something and I drop it or something. Yep. So to me to capture it, have it in my library ready to go. Oh, the uh, amount the ones, of the amount of yeah. th libraries and things that I have just on my phone. That's just a quick capture that I'm like, cool. I'll have that eventually if I need to look for it. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And these ones below it, we, I actually did those live on uh, Adobe live many years ago where we did a whole uh, boutique hotel um, three day event, which was really great. And so the sketches, all done. Those were just pencil, believe it or not. I, I think I didn't even do that. That wasn't even fresco. But um, scanned them in, got them in on capture, and the end results you can see. It really kind of the my favorites came from that, which yep. is really really cool. And it's so interesting. You get this your is, best ideas. Yeah, this is a great thing with sketches. Is look for the ideas of sketches, not necessarily the applications, mm -hmm. because none of the finals look like what the sketches are. But there are ideas from the sketches that carried over into the finals, right? Yeah, and it's like and okay, cool. The idea, of like, yeah, yep. It's just get the ideas out, and then you can pick your favorite ideas and then flesh them out. Sure, exactly. All right. The other thing too to oh. do is turn turn off all the inspiration once you're at this zone because yes. I think you'll get the more original idea. The top one, again, that was right in a notebook. I believe it's in this notebook right here. Um, drew those with the client. We were talking about it was a rotisserie company and we were thinking of the flame and everything. And that one on the top right, not only was it our favorite, you can see it actually became the real deal and it is was made into a sign. It's That's on top crazy. of the building. Really cool. Uh, Chop It Up's probably one of the most recent ones. That was the first sketch and I stopped and I was like, done. Like to me, I didn't even explore other ones because I was like, I was really inspired by wanting to be that circle lockup. Like it forms a circle yep. just with the shapes it of looks like a all the bowl. ingredients. Yep. It becomes a, yeah, and it's all about salads. So to me, it was like this perfect analogy. We just stopped. I was yep. like, done. And, and, and I love that. That's, that's the great so thing about fun. sketching is you, your ideation process probably was like, Oh, I want some like kind of freshness to it. I want it to feel like bubbly. I'm like, it'd be cool if it looked like a bowl, like it was like circular. And then you put those together and you get this and you're like, Oh, this is the right answer. Like, Oh, this is all those things. I don't need to try anything else. I've yeah. done the ideation and I've done the yeah. process. This is the thing, which is what and I love about sketching. And that's only happened one time. Like that was the only time everything else. I might experiment a bunch of stuff and go back and I, and the, the, the final design becomes the first one that you initially did. But this was one of those ones where you just say, stop. I'm, I, I, I'm, I'm in, let's go. Yep. Yep. And I love that. Uh, Golden Rose, you found the little hidden, um, the little Easter egg in there. Oh, what is it? In the chop, in the chop it up logo. Oh, the little Winky man up top, mm -hmm. right here, yep. little Winky. So the tomato, cute. orange, and smile. So yep. he he shows up all over, um, wherever the pattern is, uh, throughout the restaurant. It's pretty cool. Freaking Nick. Nick's hey. such a guys. Nick is such a good designer. Just know that. All right, um, Nick, these these converted pretty close. Yeah, I I love these two, and they never got produced, which I'm so upset. Could have fooled me. We, 
but we have them in the we have them in the bank in case uh, we decide to uh, come out with these. They're just too limited of a quantity to make the actual cans. But to me, um, type is one of my favorite things to draw. I could do that much better than than uh, nouns, pronouns, you know, uh, people, places, things like that, and stuff. So to me, I think just coming from a little bit of an architecture background, I always love drawing the art. I love the just the, the vibe of this. So to me, I wanted to find those two little badges. And what's great about them is they really became the the you know the emphasis and everything as far as what the the finals became. Yep. Also, we're gonna have to talk about architecture background because Nick, you're an enigma. Yeah. Like you say things, and you're like, oh yeah. So this one time when I was like sailing around the world, like it was yeah. yeah. It was, but we had like a cool design thing, and I'm like, wait, wait, wait. That's not the fun part of the story. Wait, what's the rest of that? We'll circle back. Well, the yeah, the major never happened. It was, you know, we both my brother and I, I think tried to follow in my dad's footsteps. And when we saw how much math was involved, we were like, let's find something a little bit different. Love that. <laughs> yep. It's like me with a theater major. And I'm like, is this a career? Um, yeah. All right. So I'm going to hop into some of my examples here. Um, you can see here, my sketches are terrible because oh, I know what I'm going to do is... in my brain once I get into Illustrator. Yep. So I, I literally, actually, I made all of this uh, in a car on the way to Disneyland. Um, oh my God! I was in the back seat and great, I had my dude. laptop, and so I had a sticky note that I wrote down right before I left. I was like, "Okay, oh man, I have to do these on the way there. Let me get them out." And so I literally just sketched here, and you can see that it translates the shapes pretty well. And then yeah. even the type, I'm like, "Cool, I want kind of this overlay," and then that turned into these stamps that are happening down here. Um, and it was me just getting the concepts that I wanted onto paper and it it's literally a sticky note. It's so small and the type is terrible because I don't know how to write. Um, and I knew what fonts I wanted to use. I knew what effects I wanted yes. to use. Um, and that's one of the things that once you get into the creative zone, once you start using creative cloud express, once you start using illustrator, you'll understand how the tools work so that your brain isn't necessarily making the product. It's just figuring out what tools and what steps do I need to get there? Um, you, yeah. And that's the I, biggest thing. I love that you said you only needed to take it to the stage because you knew exactly what that meant to you. Like, yes, you didn't have to draw more than that because you you just were dumping the idea so you wouldn't forget it and you had something to build once you got back to your computer. Yep. And like, if you look at the difference, I knew that it was all going to be type. The sketch has like three things of type on it, but then it has all those boxes. And that's me just knowing like, cool, type's going here. Like, I don't know what that's the type's going to be, but I want type there. Um, yeah. All right, so next up, this is the one that we just saw. Uh, mm. So this was all of those swashes. This is for a company that I started called Black Roses. Um, and we I wanted it to be like a momentum and have like this rose and be like super signature or whatever. Went through all these sketches and it ended up boiling down to what if we just had the thorn? Like the thorn mm -hmm. on the thing. And so this boiled down and this is what I love about sketching is like, the mark is technically there. If you look at this sketch that I starred, it has like the little thorn and it has the, the line going here, it has the rose on top. And so the idea was there and it just boiled down to something that was completely different, but sketching allowed me to get those ideas out. And after yes. four pages realized like, okay, this doesn't work. Like this isn't going to be a thing. Uh, uh, I love that. It's nice to kind of see the difference. Uh, and then here's one that I played around with. And this was for a uh, honey company. Uh, called Colony and Keeper, and I had played around with this idea of a beehive and a beekeeper's mask, and I was like, oh, they're kind of the same, like the beehive shape is on top, and so I started playing around with combining those, yeah. and this is what I love about playing around with, like, does this idea work? Like, this is a crazy idea, does it need to have a bill on it? Can I have the opening for the bee? Does it need to be smaller? Of playing around with all these shapes, and it ended up being an element that we used, but ended up kind of getting killed. Um, but having the sketches allowed me to see like, okay, it could look like a beekeeper's helmet and a beehive. We need to get into Illustrator to see if that can work. And we got in and it like kind of worked. Um, That's so great. it's nice to test your idea sketching and then be like, maybe. And then you get in and you're like, no. <laughs> yeah, that is awesome. Um, Love all right. that. So we have some amazing resources for you. And Nick's actually going to preview one of those right now. Our resources um, are right here. Take a screenshot of this page, everybody. Nick, do you want to talk through these a little bit? Yeah, I, we're big fans of Field Notes for sure. To me, that is the smallest, cheapest, most disposable. You won't get rid of them. You'll keep them. But you never feel like you can't write in them because they are just so on the go, right? Like how, how else do you describe them? I love that. Yep. That's the best. And the field Moleskin, notes, if you've never seen yeah. them, are like this size kind of yes. small thing. 
and they got some gr really nicer ones and, and really cool ones as well. But what I love, you can get a good three pack, keep one in your car, keep one in your backpack, whatever, keep one on your desk. Yep. Um, so great. Moleskins are kind of like the next generation up. They start looking like these kinds here where it's a little bit nicer. Um, this one's actually pretty nice. It's got like a little, where is I it? I have one of those near me as well. Color colded. From my this friends was at Southwest. From, this was, this, yeah, this was a nice little swag one, which was really nice. And it has the, I love this too, when it has like the little placeholder in there as well. Yep. Those are really great. And your next one, Reconnect, is the coolest thing that I've ever seen. Yeah. So Nick's going to show you this book. Nick, what is a sketchbook? Because it literally blows my mind. Yeah, so this is it. It's called Reconnect. And again, it has like a little bungee on the thing here so you can close it, right? Like that. When you open this up, what's so cool about it is each page is totally individual. So I'm going to open it up here and show you. So I could take this page right here. <gasps> I take it right out because it's got a magnet strip goes right back in place it right back on there and you'll see it goes right in there close it it has like a you can see here it has like a little bit of a where is it there we go uh, a little higher it has a little metal rod in the middle and that is where all the pages connect to it and you could so I didn't realize what people freaked out about this so much because it's you're, so cool you're afraid to draw because you want to rearrange the order once you're finally done with a lot of your stuff and that's exactly what you could do. And so what's great about this thing is I could even take 20 pages and just pop them right out. And there they are. So you can see it's got a little magnet strip. Yeah, it's chat's, just like chat's little... losing their mind. Yeah, that, yeah. <laughs> that's incredible. So go check them out. Uh, the, the, that's the link. It's called reconnect.com, I believe, is the site there and yep. everything. Um, I had no idea this was such a cool thing. But again, to me, going to your little dr drug and discount store, Target, whatever, just get these. These little spiral bound ones, I mean, they're 99 cents during back to school, right? Yep. Get a bunch of them. And to me, I think those are the best. They have the pockets yep. in case you Spe ever have to throw everything in there. Speaking Love of it. back to school, um, if you're just Thank joining you. us for the first time, again, our numbers randomly went up. Hi. Um, if you're just joining us, we have an entire season called back to school here on Office <laughs> Hours. It's seamless transition. Uh, and if you're just going back to school, it's early January. We have an entire season called Back to School that you can check out on the Creative Cloud YouTube channel. Or you can go to behance.net slash live slash students. And all of our yes. episodes of uh, Office okay. Hours are there. We have an entire course that is getting ready you, getting ready for you to go back to school. So check those out. Yeah. And the last one on our list, of course, Fresco, Adobe Fresco. And that's what we're going to hop into totally right great. now. Um, yeah. Nick, we're just going to jump right in there. Show us some of your sketches in it. Fresco. And then we'll get some time to do our last prompt. Oh, perfect. Let's do it. So I, I use this a lot with my students because a lot of times they'll be struggling with something. And because we're virtual still and we meet up maybe once a month, to me, getting to just do this where I can actually put in inspiration art, I can put in a color palette just like this. I can write notes off to the side. To me, this is a great tool to just get sketching. But what we're going to do, I wanted to just show you that because I, I just love this idea of how Fresco is literally your sketch pad on the go, right? And what we want to talk about a little bit is where we ended off last week, right? That was the Mystic Rescue Cafe, correct? Yes, Mythic. So mythic. Um, if you there are you just go. joining us, we did ideation last week and we talked about the Mythic Rescue Cafe. And this is your homework of what we're going to do right now together is we're mm -hmm. going to sketch some ideas for Mythic Rescue Cafe. Um, Nick, what was the idea and the concept that we came up with for this cafe? Yeah, it's kind of like Rainforest Cafe, uh, you name it, but it's going to be a cafe that all of its proceeds will go to rescuing and keeping certain animals off the endangered species list, right? So, yes. But we will pay tribute and use as reference anything that was mythic from the past to really entice the yes. whole um, concept. That may have gone extinct. So dragons yeah. and fawns and all kinds of mm -hmm. uh, fun mythic things. And the whole idea behind this is that we don't want more mythic animals. We want to keep them alive. We want to keep them off the endangered list. So Mythic Rescue Cafe is what we are working on together here in Office Hours. And what we want you to do is go ahead and sketch along with us right now. Uh, Nick, the, yes. the Discord that's right below us, right down here, discord.gg yeah, slash ACC, you can sketch along and check this out. It looks like people have already started sketching some ideas, um, and I love some of the symbols that are happening in here. Um, so fantastic job. I believe this is Katarina has gone in, started sketching ideas, and this is the way to do it, is literally have a million sketches and just throw them around and then start to kind of bring them down. I love this vibe. That's a That's great. vibe. Um, and play around and then add in some effects. So I want you to sketch with us right now for the mythic 
excuse me, Mythic Rescue Cafe. Um, sketch yes. some ideas and drop them in Discord because at the end of the show, we'll be checking them out. We'll have you guys hop in here and uh, explain your ideas. And Katarina, if you want to come on, uh, please, more than welcome, let me know in Discord and we'll bring you on at the end of the show. Uh, but Nick, let's look at your process a little bit of sketching. Yeah. What are we doing here? So all I did was I just went and did a qu quick little brief kind of search for some things. I found a really cool M under Mythic. I found this one that I thought was kind of really fun to mess around with that kind of almost uh, Dungeons and Dragons kind of vibe and look. Then just some iconic things that kind of say Mythic or whatever. And I think this could make, make for a really cool one. Uh, love these as well. Maybe it could be a little bit more spiral, a little bit more serpent inspired. But then I also looked up rescue and what is what are the icons and the things for rescue? And for like these two kind of came up as well. So to me, I just love having them on the side. And my first thing is to just start thinking about, you know, if if I'm gonna start with this, we agree that it would be like um mythic is more the name, and then you would have like rescue cafe right underneath it so yes. my first thought is like i'm doing things as simple as this guys it's literally just okay this would be a simple icon that could be used on its own mythic is the main name right and then i have this as my kind of like you know description name you yep. know so what i love about that is it's giving me the idea that this could be on its own, Mythic could be on its own, Rescue Cafe could be on its own, it can come together. There's, I just know this, I'm gonna have this very flexible logo right from the very beginning. So I'm literally gonna do this kind of stuff first. That simple, that like that down and dirty, you know? Yep. Uh, so I want to show you as Nick does that. So what I love to do is to jump into Illustrator and kind of toss ideas. So I'm gonna show you um, an actual pitch that I did for a client. Uh, and this is how I love to work when I get into my sketching is I literally am just tossing ideas. And so the concept of this was for a client where it called Lakeside tours like Lake. And so I'm like, cool, maybe like water stuff. Right. And then I abandon this idea. I'm like, okay, the, the idea is there. Uh, and then we move up here and I'm like, okay, maybe yeah. more lines. Maybe it's got these pebbles. This was an idea we worked on together. And I was like, no, this is dumb. Uh, here's like some ripple stuff is I love to sketch with the tools that I know and get the ideas out. And then I can iterate on those and see like, okay, what comes of these? Because it's easier for me to do that kind of stuff in Illustrator, right? Than to do it in Sketch. Um, sketching out the like wavelengths and stuff would be really hard for me to do on paper, yeah. but I'm like, I can do that in Illustrator in 10 seconds. Um, and I, so I, I like to throw that. I, that is my favorite part of the design process is moving to something as simple as that you know, but uh, in that world of creating an artboard and just filling it up with all that stuff. But what I have realized is the times that I do just this kind of level of sketching first, getting a few ideas down, my time in the Illustrator document is much more focused because I'm I, I'm not in a blue sky mode. This is where I'm in blue sky. You yep. know, this is where I'm figuring out all those cool things. So also too, like what's great about this too is the eraser part of it to me <laughs> is so much fun because now I'm like, oh, you know what? We got to get that plus sign in there. I want to have, maybe it's, so now all of a sudden you get this, you're, to me, I don't, I wouldn't erase so much on paper. So to the fact that Fresco is this like more versatile kind of way, all of a sudden now I, I'm not scrapping an idea. I'm just going in there and making a quick little, you know, thing to it. Yep. And they can move these around on the page as needed as well with the lasso and everything. But all of a sudden I'm like, oh, I have something really cool here. I don't have to do much more detail. This is kind of like what you did. I'm going to leave it at this and move to the next one because I don't want to spend that much more time. Yeah. Right. Dang, Nick, you're so good. Um, oh, stop. Yes. And I want to I want to show where my my next step, step of sketching went, especially with that client. So this is, again, those ideas. I really focus on concepts when I'm doing stuff like that. And so stuff like this that I'm like, I'm not going to sketch this, but the idea is capturing motion. What does it look like for type to look like a person walking or for type to look like a wave? Um, and so I love to get in if, if it warrants it, if it's something that I can just sketch, I'll sketch it. Um, but if it's something that I'm like, okay, I need to like figure that out. I, I want to jump in here on Katarina's real quick. Uh, cause this is amazing. One, uh, two, I, I think that like, it looks really cool as a mark, but here's what I see is I want to turn this and then invert it so that it becomes an M right. So it becomes like this kind of really cool stylized M and then maybe half tone this out, right? And this could be a really cool mark, Ooh. right? Doesn't, and it feels, it feels like to me, 
this could build out into a system of like different pieces. Like it could be uh, a cropped in swash. We could do something to where it kind of, you know, crops in uh, boop. something like that. And we start to get these interesting shapes and patterns we could have on the walls or not. Ooh. Right. It's kind of fun. Love that. Uh, so I'm going to hop back over to Nick's because, again, Nick is just like going to town. But this is this is for you, uh, Wade. He said, "Where was it?" Um, Got to go back to his thing. Hold on for a second. Uh, he had a great one. Where it was like, "How about the M as the mountain with a flying dragon silhouette?" So that, that's a good idea. Go. So I'm trying to give you this idea here. So again, the other things I like to do is kind of like figure out like, okay, I can make some quick guidelines so I can do rescue cafe kind of down here figure it out. But again, do I like this idea? Great. Check it. Move on to the next one. You see what I mean? Like you have, this is the freedom of it. I, and if you're working collaborative with folks or if you're sitting down with someone else and they're brainstorming at the same time, what a great way to kind of run ideas back and forth with each other. You yes, know? exactly. And the I love thing, that. the thing that I love, and I love that our processes are completely different for like getting ideas out is yeah. to me, I would get stuck because my brain immediately started thinking of like, okay, well, what color is this? Like, what color does this shape go with, right? And you're really good at like getting the type in and stuff. And my brain was literally stuck. I'm like, oh man, what would it look like color? And so I had to put a box <laughs> and be like, okay, what's like the perfect purple to put behind this? Because I feel like purple is mystic and it feels right. And so I literally was like, okay, I have to be an illustrator for this. Because if I'm pen and pencil, I'm going to get stuck trying to find a color. And that's all I'm going to think about. Um, and so yeah. again, we've talked about it a million times. There's no right way to do this. Um, we're showing you a million different ways, but there's no right way. There's no wrong way. There are just ways. Um, Ooh, there are just ways. There's just ways. I love that. And uh, Jennifer says, I so much forget about this sort of creation. I'm getting sucked into sketching and watercolor, but digital is my playground. It's where I'm happy and play with ideas. Yes, absolutely. Ooh, good. Yeah. Like, I look at, I, I didn't even think about it, but I was draw, trying to draw this guy here, which I just, this inspiration from that guy, right? And the cool thing about it was, and I was thinking about what Wade said with the mountain and everything, but as a, if you draw that circle... I can easily make, you know, a cool little M out of that, that on its own just has this really neat little shape, right? Yep. And, and again, do we put in, get in the, that, that could be where the plus sign goes for the rescue or whatever, but this could get all like beveled and kind of like, you can kind of go in and like say, oh, you know what? I want that idea for this one to be beveled. So I'm just going to draw, you know, quickly like this. Now it's almost like it's got a little Batman-ish thing going which, on. Which there, is which so is funny cool. because I would be so stressed about figuring out how to bevel it, but I could go into Illustrator and hit bevel and be like, got it. <laughs> but here's but, where you've probably just, by doing this one, because I know I do the same thing, dude. I would go right in there and I'd yep. spend 40 minutes beveling it and then find out, oh, uh, there wasn't a really great option to go down and figure out. But yes. remember we said earlier, this finds pitfalls and, and hurdles m much sooner without wasting time. And I, I think that's the cool part about this thing. It's just such a great way to go. Absolutely. You know? um, and something that I love to do, so Nick likes to sketch out his type. And for me, I like to go off of emotion. And so mm -hmm. I love to hop into Illustrator again uh, because yes. my handwriting's terrible and I'm not good at drawing letters. And so I'll hop in here and I know the emotions that I want. And so I'll use Adobe fonts and just go in to find more. And there's a great filter and the filter allows you to like find ideas and concepts and emotions that you can tie yeah. to things. So like I can come in here once it initializes, give it a second. It's thinking about it. It's really, really thinking about it. It is considering, there we go. Um, I can come in here and type in and I know that I want something that's more decorative. I want something that's going to be a little bit of a heavier lift on the thickness. And then I can just scroll in here and you can see that it's going to push all of those through for me with a live preview. So I can kind of scroll through and find something that fits really well um, what I'm looking for. And I do have something in my brain that I really like. Yeah. Uh, I just need to find it. Ooh. I don't know Yeah, there this. you go. I really like that. There's something about that M that's been created with the stars and everything that it, I like that it's a little bit abstract and it's not the the total M. Like to me, that can live on its own. It almost feels serpent-like. It almost feels animal inspired. Yes. You know? Um, you know, yeah, I think a real Western font would look great with. <laughs> yeah, I man, I want one um, called. I can't think of what it's called. Uh, I think. It, oh, it might be Hobo. It might be the new Hobo. Let me look. Oh, I love that new one. It's uh, really neat. H H O B. There it is. Mm, this isn't what I thought it was. 
Man, it's I gonna see kill where me if you're I can going because it feels like it's got a little like you got like this like Arabian kind of vibe to it, right? Yes, I want it kind of like mm. blobby, if that makes any blobby. sense. Uh, I, just like blobby. Uh, but I don't know what if you if chat if you have any examples or any thoughts, uh, let me know. I'm literally just gonna scroll through here and keep going. Uh, let's see if anyone's put anything in Discord. Not yet. So we got about five minutes left in the show. Uh, if you have sketches and you're working with us, post it in Discord. Mimi says she has an idea. Um, so post it in Discord if you have an idea. Wade looks like he's typing right now. Let's see if Wade has an idea. Uh, if not, you can always post in Discord at any point. Um, you can always put your ideas in here. You can always collaborate with us, see what can happen before the next week. Because next week, we'll be talking about Illustrator basics. We'll be showing you how to use Illustrator, how to go from the ground up, and we'll probably be using some of these examples. And the week after that, we'll be talking about how to make a logo. So we'll probably be using some of these sketches to make some logo options. So we want to see yours. We want to see Nick's. We want to see mine. Um, I'm probably going to look at Katarina's a little bit because it's so good. Uh, and Nick, you're just like feeling a vibe now. I, I got inspired by... What was it? This kind of idea? This thing? I was like, okay, what about the dragon's tail or something kind of cool here where the M creates something here? I know that might look more like an MA, so maybe that's not working. But as well, I didn't spend more than 15 seconds on it. So again, if that's what I like, but it's not working too well, then I'll just move aside here and I'll just kind of go, okay, so maybe it just needs, maybe the A or the, the swirl comes off that guy. Yep. Uh, and Give someone's some. asking what channel in Discord down here in the homework channel. So we're going to be working in that homework channel right over here. Uh, people are posting in Creative Basics as well. Uh, Mimi has one right here. Oh, that's nice. That's super clean. Uh, I'm going to yeah. pull this into Illustrator real quick just so I can flush it out, out a little bit uh, and turn it. That looks clean. But if you want to post in the homework, we also have an idea from Nick. Um, I actually love the like roughness of just the wing part top here. It feels yes. really interesting to me as just like a, it's very textural and feels very like scrolly. I don't know how to describe it, mm, but I love yeah. that. Freaking Wade. Uh, maybe this will inspire something. Uh, and Wade is, this is a puppet concept. Also, if you guys don't know, Wade, our moderator, is like the most incredible illustrator I've ever seen in my life. Oh, that is amazing. Um, but maybe this will be inspiration for someone. Again, using that yeah. fantasy mythic idea. Um, also, this is just the cutest, the cutest thing. Uh, and yes, post sketches and ideas. I'm going to take this into Illustrator real quick because I just want to flush it out. Oh, we scanned that in real large. All right. Uh, let's see. So this is a great idea. And I'm just going to look. I'm looking for basic shapes here so that we can make it look uh, pretty close to what we would want it to. That's going to continue out. Uh, so I'm just going to do maybe this. Down here, keep it super angular, I think would be nice. Ooh, that's looking good. I like that. Let's see here, up that way, a little bit this way. And I think that I would build this all with half circles if I was going to rebuild it. Um, I think we could, but like, it's <laughs> this unicorn's gonna look shocked with that eye. <laughs> uh, so I'm just gonna put these in here and see how it looks as kind of uh, a joined piece. Uh, where am I gonna cut these? Let's see, this can cut down here and then at the overlap up here and then kill this. All right, so that looks kind of cool. Let's see. Ooh. Right? It, it kind of has like a moonness as well. Like it kind of has like a moon to it. Looks I like that. It feels clean. Really and it feels cool. like it could be very, very, very clean. Like if I really yeah. worked on getting these curves as half circles, that could be super clean. Nick, what the frick, dude? I like look away for like uh, ten seconds and then Nick's got like, here's another thing. Uh what do you got there, Nick? I was just thinking that they got the 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 cross sign, which was kind of like the rescue. And the M as well, trying to get a little bit more medieval and kind of like fun here as well. The neat thing is you can obviously, my first thought would be like you could do something very simple like this. So Mystic up on top and maybe yep. Rescue Cafe here. 
So you know, this is a great example, and this is literally Nick. I'm gonna be so mean right now. I I don't mean that mean. Uh, but this is a great example of like when you sketch something and you're like, oh, there's a problem already. To me, yeah. that feels super religious, and it's religious, like, exactly. okay, cool. It feels like very crusader, and so yeah, it's like, oh, that was a really cool idea. And then we started looking at it more, and we're like, oh, no, 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 no. Um, yeah. we've got a couple more in here. Christelle just <laughs> dropped one. Uh, a little hippogriff. Uh, that looks super fun. Uh, yeah. And then we had Violet tossing in some ideas. Ooh. Ooh, oh cap, yeah! Idea. Oh my gosh, I love the idea of like a cup with a tiny Cafe. little creature, like its little ears poking out of the the cup. Um, I'm putting weight on that. Wade, put that on your list for live streams, like way in the future. Is a little cup with little animal ears coming out of it. It's a little a cute little that animal. That is really neat. All right, uh, great job, everyone. Keep doing your sketches. Keep doing sketches. Keep putting them in there. Yes. We are out of time for today, but down here, Discord.gg/acc, you can post your sketches in there at any time. Even if you're watching a replay, even if you're catching up, we'll see it. Discord still exists, uh, and we will all still appreciate it's it. Still alive. It's still alive. Do uh, it. All right, Nick. Next week we are talking about Illustrator basics. Uh, we'll show you all of the things that you need to know if you already know some illustrator it'll be a great foundation for you to continue um but thanks for joining us here on office hours nick when are yeah, we everybody. here when does this happen for all our new friends it is every friday at 2 30 p.m pacific time guys so if you're new to us today join us again this is just the beginning we're only in week two it's like you don't even have to binge us you can just be with us every stage every yes. friday 50 for the rest more of the weeks year. 50 more weeks yeah. uh, <laughs> all right we will see you all next week for another episode of adobe office hours and uh this is the end of our week for office or for uh, adobe live so we'll see you back on monday with another daily creative challenge in photoshop bye have a great weekend